Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to a channel. Very big, very important video for you guys today, all about icon trading. This is going to be an icon investing, icon trading guide that I'm going to put up for you guys today. A lot of people have been asking me, how do I trade with icons? What is the way to trade with them? What do I need to look for? Um, what do I need to know? And how do I know if an icon is a deal? What do I sell at? Um, what happens to, to icons during promos, stuff like that. I want to make this a one-time guide with all the information that you're going to need to trade with icons on FIFA 20. So that is my goal for this video today. It's probably going to be a, a little bit longer, uh, but that's okay. There's going to be a ton of information in here, and we're going to go through so many different things in regards to icons. We're going to look at the base overall aspects of icon trading and, of, and a lot of the little nitpicky things as well. Um, because this is one of the most fun ways to trade on FIFA Ultimate Team, in my opinion. I think this is one of the most fun ways to make coins on this game. Obviously, as you can tell right now, I don't have a ton of coins. I have some stuff on my transfer list. So I won't be able to buy an icon uh, as a part of this video for you guys. Um, but I definitely know my stuff. Last year, one of the things that I learned to do was trade icons. Um, and I flipped tons and tons of icons. If you really wanted to go back, you could look on my Twitter and scroll down at all the icons that I posted flips of. Um, it's, it's just a very, very fun way to trade. And it's very profitable as well if you had that high coin amount. So I want to get into this. And basically what we're going to talk about, I'm going to kind of go through just kind of some questions and stuff. And we're going to rattle it off and just start going and try to cover everything in this video, okay? So I want to ask the question first, why? Why would you trade with icons? If you're somebody who maybe has 500K or more, that's where I would start to look at icons. If you have over 500,000 coins, that's where I would say you're in the icon trading zone at this point in FIFA. Uh, icons are a great way to make money because they fluctuate a lot, they are rare on the market, and they have high demand. These are some of the rarest cards on the market. Uh, because they're just not packed that much, but they also have a very high amount of demand because people want these cards for their teams. They have great statistics. They're um, basically at this point of the game early on in FIFA, these set of cards, these icons, have very, very good statistics, a lot better than some other uh, gold cards that we have in the game, and some of them just perform differently. Icons just feel different in game. I haven't used one this year, but in years past, icons just have like different feel to them. And just has that stigma to them. Just the, you know, the the legend you used to watch Hullet play, you used to watch Vieira, you used to watch Rush or Treza Gay or Van der Sar play. And you just have that, you know, you've, you've seen them on TV, they've since retired. But now this is your way of connecting with that player who is either on your favorite team or was it a player that you enjoyed watching back in the day on FIFA Ultimate Team. So that's where, like, the icon trading demand comes into play people know these cards people so many people have watched Pirlo Pirlo is a new icon newer icons that have been added to the game in the recent year have a lot of hype this is a card that I would say is probably good to trade with if you're on the lower budget like maybe 600 700 thousand coins this could be a card you look to trade with the baby Pirlo a lot of people are going to try this one out so what that leads me into next what icons do we want to trade with we want to trade with icons it's just kind of like when we invest in uh lower tier gold cards like sbc fodder cards you notice a lot of the cards that i have here on this transfer list are of good nationality or they're known to be overpowered icons viera a very overpowered icon in fifa hullet van der Sar last year really um got popular because of the green link that he gives to vvd i think he's popular this year as well um, and then Popular nationalities, you have a French Trezeguet Gay here, um, and then good statistics as well. Keen is known as being a very good CDM in this game as an icon, and here he is, the middle Keen, uh, at a pretty reasonable price for an icon. And then also the brand new icons that I mentioned before, like guys like Rush, guys like Ian Wright, guys like Pirlo, uh, Zidane, Drogba, Kaká, guys like that, Pep Guardiola even, on a low budget icon trade, guys like that are going to be... Uh, easier to sell when you're flipping icons on the market and they're gonna be in demand more than some of these other cards now you saw this filter that I set up here uh, this kind of weeds out some of the very lower tier icons if I go to the very lowest tier of icons you're gonna see a lot of these guys in here I'm not gonna recommend that you trade with these guys Inzaghi, Lehman, Schmeichel, the baby versions of these cards I really wouldn't touch these cards because there's not a lot of money in these to be honest 
there's really not a lot of money in these cards because not very many people want them and there's no icon SBCs this year with the icon swap coming out soon uh, we know about those that are coming so there's no there's no demand for the floor of icons because you can't put them into SBCs like you could in the past so that's kind of the thing there make sure it's just like when we're talking about trading with regular cards in the market make sure you're trading with cards that are you know that have demand that cards card that are cards people are actually going to want to use in FIFA Ultimate Team uh, and not just try to trade with Baby Makalele, who is a very non-OP meta usable card in this game. So next, I want to go into how. How do you want to search these cards on the market, and how do you want to pick a card to buy them? So, since on on the PS4 and Xbox is a little bit different. Obviously, on the PS4, there's a lot more cards, a lot more listings that are on the market, so you have a lot more to filter through. Um, so that's why you set you saw me set up that filter that I did right here So I put a minimum buy now price of 500,000 coins because most of the icons that we want to focus on and we want to trade with because they are meta They are popular or they are a good nationality good league easy for um, Making a hybrid in teams obviously icons are good for hybrids because they link to everybody But the strong links from the popular nations play a part as well most of those are above 500,000 coins and I put a max buy now price of a million because I want to kind of stay in that range um, because there's a lot of icons that are in that range, especially if you're trying to flip icons and make the most coin amount from it. That's kind of a, a very good filter you can use as well. Another filter you can use is go by nationality. So you go by Brazilian icons, you know, and kind of set a filter. Okay, you know, this baby Roberto Carlos is kind of cheap. So maybe I set a minimum buy it now price on the Brazilian filter. Some of these guys are very expensive, you know, Garincha, Pele, Socrates, Rivaldo. Um, maybe you set a minimum buy now in this filter of like 700K uh, and then a max of like 2 mil. If you're somebody who's on a higher budget, you're going to be able to find a lot of cards that are in this price range um, that you can filter through as well. So filtering by, filtering by nationality is a good shout as well, but I love this filter. Um, this is just a very easy and quick way to get a lot of icons so you can basically if you're on console on the companion or on the web app this will uh, minimize the amount of searches that you have to take to get to the 59th minute uh, by a lot so this Pirlo was just I was watching it on my on my tra transfer list excuse me transfer targets I was just watching this for 600,000 coins flat here it got the relist um, it's not really that big of an undercut the guy undercut by 8,000 coins so not much of an undercut there um, but he did get a relist right there. Oh, what do we have here? A bid of 646 on this Mateus and a buy now of 657. That's interesting. This might get bought, you know. Just, those are the things that you have to kind of see on the icon market. You have to notice, hey, there's a bid on this card for this amount, and this card has a buy now price. How do we know if that is a good price? Or how do you know if these cards at the 59th minute are a good price? And for that, you're going to use our handy dandy friend. Footbin. So we're going to go over here. Let's look at that Mateus card that I was pointing out. We're going to look at Lo Lothar Mateus, if it would actually load for me. Thank you. The baby Lothar Mateus. Looks like, according to Footbin on PlayStation 4, he cycles between. And we're going to look at the hourly graphs for this. The daily graph is important to see how his market trend is overall, but the hourly graph is going to show you on a day by day basis how much his card price fluctuates. So in the weekly sell off, he was between 650, 700, and 640. So 640 to 700. Uh, yesterday, which was Monday, down to 644, 634. Uh, so that one for 657 that we have right here isn't really that low. It doesn't look like this card fluctuates a ton. So based on what I'm seeing in these graphs right here, I'm seeing, you know, he probably sells somewhere around, you know, 670, maybe 680. If you get kind of lucky on the weekend, especially he'll be up towards 700 for sure. But most of the time it looks like he's selling around the 670, 660 to 650 range on the PlayStation 4. So you have to calculate tax in here. This is the biggest thing with icons is you have to really calculate the tax to know if you're getting a deal. So 600, let's say you're going to sell for like 670,000 coins. Well, the tax on a 700,000 coin card would be 35K, takes 70, 700,000 coins. Uh, divided by 10 and then cut that in half again to get your 5% tax. 35k on a 700k sale. Uh, sale. So if you sell it for 670, um, you're gonna have somewhere around what is that gonna be like 33,500 
tax, so you have to and you have to plan for tax. So if you sell for six seventy minus thirty three thousand five hundred, so you're gonna have to buy that card definitely if you want to make any profit for less than like six twenty six ten. You're gonna want to look around the six hundred flat range to make a really good profit on that card. Maybe six twenty would be okay. Um, actually, maybe six fifteen or six ten would be a good place to look for that because you want to make your coin flip worth it. You you don't want to go out here and buy an Icon Mateus, buy it for 630k, list it for 670 and make like 5000 coins after tax. That, that's not what you're going for with these icons. That's just a way to inflate your TP. And there's a lot of beef between people on Twitter that like to do that and think that people are trading icons just to trade their to beef their TP up and um, between other people that think are they're actually trying to trade icons. To make money on the game, 997 for Kaká is a fresh. It is fresh. Second owner tradable. Interesting. You can learn a lot by getting back here on the 59th minute. Ooh, there's another Kaká baby. You can learn a lot by getting back here and looking at a lot of these uh, card prices. And basically, the way to learn these prices is to add them to your transfer list. So this is a fresh Hugo Sanchez for 760. There aren't any open bids, but he does have one up there at 770. So. Um, you maybe can add this one to your transfer list, transfer targets, I mean, and watch the card price of that player to learn about that card's price. That's the most important thing with these icons. Adding the cards to your transfer targets or your watch list can really give you a good idea of what they sell for. So speaking of getting a good idea of what they sell for, I added this Vieira. It was the lowest one on the market about 30 minutes ago. Um, before I sat down to record this video, I added this Vieira to my watch list. It's sold at 1.369 million coins. And I just added this one over here. This Vieira sold for 1.308 million coins. So obviously there's not uh, really a range in here where you could make money selling it for 60K more at 1.3 million. Uh, I mean, you're going to lose on that if you bought this card and listed it at 1.36. But it's interesting to know, okay, I know the Vieira could potentially sell overnight almost at 1.4 mil if the card is rare on the market. And this Vieira here sold for 1.038. So while that card was up on the market, you would probably not want to buy it because you can't buy that card and flip it. But you want to look for undercuts. And that's sometimes where you want to leave a lower priced card on the market for as long as you can sometimes. If it's kind of in a flippable range, like maybe I would make 10K on this card. Uh, like if I would make 10k on this Vieira that I was, that I was looking to flip, but maybe somebody will come in right after that and uh, undercut by 50k because it's weekend league sell off time and they're looking to sell their cards, so they undercut by 50k and then boom, I can buy that card and then list it up and I might have a 60,000 coin profit on a card like that. So that's a very important thing to look at with icons too, since they are so rare. They don't sell as easy, so some people know that and they realize, hey, if I want this to sell quick and to get my coins back. I'm going to have to undercut and that's where you find the deals on a lot of these cards on the under on the undercut. So again, use your transfer targets, use your transfer list, your watch list um, to really watch these icons and to learn what prices they sell for. Use Footbin as well. Let's let's look at Vieira um, as I was just mentioning his name. Patrick Vieira, if I can actually type his last name correctly, which I did and the drop down didn't come up. But Vieira on PS4, 1369, as you can see, it was updated 57 minutes ago. So Footbin never even registered that 1.308 card that I have on my transfer list. That one never even, re even registered. But you can look at yesterday. This Vieira was on the market for 1.254, and now he's sold it, selling at 1.369. If you bought that card and listed it up for 1.369 where, he, where he now you know he can sell there, that's some big time profit right there. That's a very good flip on a card of this value. Even the 1.275, if you know that he sells there, um, that's a good price. Let's look at the Sunday price fluctuations. Again, he was down under 1.3, 1.261, 1.286, and then 1.297. So you know that if this Vieira card, if you see him at 1.27, 1.26, or below that, that's probably a very flippable deal because this, this card is one of the most sought after icons in the game. There's going to be a lot of buying power on this card. Once people get the coins to buy this card, um, you're going to see a lot of people buy it uh, because it's very, very popular. So that's another thing to take in consideration is the popularity of the card. Now, let's say you find a Vieira, which we're using as our example right now. Let's say you find a Vieira, 1.25 mil. 
and you know that you can maybe get them to sell overnight at 1.35, 1.36 million coins. So you're thinking, okay, I should be able to make a decent amount of coins on this icon flip. What do you sell the card for? Really, it depends in that moment in time. You have to look at the market because the market for these icons is always changing and you have to make your card look enticing and you have to make it look sellable and look kind of stand out and look like a good purchase for the rest of the market. So right now, there's one at 1.375, there's one at 1.320. If you bought one at 125, you don't want to undercut this card because you're not making a lot of coins. Your card doesn't have to be the cheapest on the market to sell when it comes to icons. If that one that you bought at 1.25 million coins is fresh, list that sucker up at 1.375. Match this card's price overnight. Overnight or overnights are great times to get sales on cards like this. This Viera as well, oh, it's not fresh, that sucks. What about this one right here, it's fresh. So this guy knows he has a fresh card, it's the only fresh Viera on the market, so we jacked his price up. Obviously it's listed for two days, I would not recommend that. I would list it for one hour each time, or six hours for overnight, or 12 hours, depending on how long you sleep, whatever. But if you have fresh cards, never underestimate the power of the fresh cards. But if you got that Viera, let's say you got them at 1.25 mil, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed, I'm gonna list them overnight. What do I list them at? Or even you bought them right away and you wanna just get it back up on the market and, and relist it. You don't always have to be the lowest buy it now because there's a lot of buyers on the market, especially for a Viera card like this. Um, so maybe I would probably list it up at somewhere around 1.365. Because yes, you know that he sells kind of in that range on the high end, but if this card sells, all of a sudden, yours is the cheapest on the market. Or if this card expires, yours is the cheapest on the market. So having your card be the cheapest or the second cheapest on the market is kind of where I look for a quicker flip on the icons. Now, if you have millions upon millions of coins and you don't need that card to sell right away, you can afford to take a little bit more time um, and let that card sit there for a bit. But you want to get your coins back so you can flip another icon, right? So having yours be like the second cheapest on the market is probably a good shout um, sometimes you need it to be the cheapest uh, if you really need to get those coins in and out really fast just kind of depends on your coin amount and how many coins that you have and also know the state of the market if the market if we're after a promo let's say uh, we're looking at the team of the group stage promo a lot of packs were just opened a lot of cards are entering the market you got a couple icons on snipes and then you're thinking uh, I want to relist my card, but what do I list it at? Because I know that these people are opening packs and they're getting coins and they're going to go buy back these cards eventually for their weekend league teams. You can you can afford to list those cards a lot higher because you might buy a Hullet for 920k on a fresh snipe um, during Team of the Group stage, but you know that he sells for usually somewhere around 1 million coins, a little over 1 mil like this card right here. But a fresh card heading into Weekend League on a Friday where people panic sold everything before the promo, there was a bunch of packs open, and people have more coins. Maybe you list that holding card that's fresh. Maybe you list it for like 1.099 or 1.09 flat um, and try to squeeze some extra money out of that card because people will have more coins from opening packs and the market will be inflated a little bit higher. So that's a situation where you might be able to list your icon a bit higher um, in terms of you know the market is about to swing in a big up and upswing it's about to trend up because there's a lot of packs just opened um, or it's Thursday rewards that's another thing to think about um, so you can you kind of have to take those things into account when you're listing icons as well so that's listing icons that's a very important part because you obviously you want your icon to sell you can get a great buy price but if you don't list your icon correctly at the right price or um, take into consideration what the market is looking like. Uh, you might be cheating yourself out of or listing too low uh, and losing out on some coins. So that is listing that is listing icons. So what influences price? We're almost done, boys, I promise, all right? I'm almost done talking about these. Hopefully you guys have learned a bunch already. What influences price? Promo panic, as we talked about. Um, even thinking about these, this foot swap promo that's coming up. Um, you're probably gonna see some panic selling on the icons. Could be a great opportunity to pick up the cards before the promo comes out and then people are realizing, hey, I'm going to have to grind for these icons. There really shouldn't be any panic selling anyway. Um, and then them going, buying them right back. 
Uh, that's called like a panic sell before a promo. That's a great time to pick up some of these icons. And I mentioned it as well. Snipes during big time pack openings, either a reward set, so Thursday when rewards are coming out, or during a promo set, when promo packs are opened up for a promotion, 100Ks, 50Ks, Black Friday, whatever, that's a great time to pick up icons as well. You can use a special filter in that time frame to pick up fresh undercuts on the market. Uh, so let's say I'm gonna be down here at my 500,000 coin price range again, uh, 500K and one mil, and we need to go to League Icons, and then we also need to put the chemistry style to basic. This is another way to filter out icons uh, because you get the fresh icons. Now you have to be you have to be careful and you have to check: is the card actually basic? Is the card actually fresh? Is it the basic chem style real, or is that card not fresh at all? Okay, so that's one thing that you really have to be sure of. You can go and you look. Okay, seven contracts usually means it is fresh. But you probably want to second guess and right click on the card and actually look at its price because sometimes, sometimes it'll say seven contracts like this, but it won't be fresh because people will try, people will try to trick you on this type of stuff. People will really try to trick you on some of these icons. Don't just look for seven contracts. Right click on the card or click player info. Take the couple extra seconds to look at that card and see if it is a fresh one. Uh, like this one right here, it has a basic chem style, but it's not fresh. It is first owner but not fresh. So that's something you have to keep into account as well. As I mentioned, those do sell for a premium. What else impacts icon prices? Pro qualifier events. The first pro qualifier for the FIFA 19 Global Series is this weekend, October 12th and 13th. I already know they can only have two icons in the squad. There are some crazy ratings requirements for the qualifiers and for the pro events this year. Before qualifiers, you can only have an 84 rated squad with two icons. So a guy like this Vieira and this Hullet could make it into a lot of teams because they're very meta cards and they are uh, kind of lower rated, but also like their their player build and game is very beast. You know, people love Hullet, people love Vieira. So that's something to watch out for as well. Some extra, um, depending on the requirements, if icons are able to be used, some extra hype on icons, they could go extra high, especially on a guy like Vandersaar maybe, if there's no requirements for a weekend league and Van Dyke got an inform, you, it's very easy to link Van Dyke with the green link from Vandersaar. Um, but again, very popular guys like Vieira, um, Hullet, I mentioned Vandersaar, maybe even guys like a Drogba or Zidane, depending on who the pros start using. Uh, and we'll figure that out as time goes on. But those pro qualifier events can affect the price as well. And then again, you can do Tech Avion. We noticed back here on the market that there was a couple people trying to do Tech Avion, 99 contracts and some of these icons. You can do, look at this, a couple Tech Avions right here. A Luis Hernandez baby, it's a fresh. They added 99 contracts. Oh, that's fitness. My bad. I thought I, thought I saw 99 contracts on that one. How many of these cards have 99 contracts? Are there anybody out here? This one right here. This Butragueno, somebody's trying to do a little bit of Tech Avion with it. They threw 99 contracts on the card, 99 fitness, and a basic chem style. It is not fresh though. You'd have to click on the card to realize, but that's a way you can squeeze a couple extra thousand coins out of your icon flips. One other thing as well, when you're searching the transfer market, be careful. Be very careful whether you're on mobile app, on companion app, or on the console. Sometimes when you compare price in your transfer targets, it doesn't show you every single icon that is appearing on the market. Look, this is interesting right here. Pirlo, remember that Pirlo that we saw that did not sell for 600K flat and that had a Hunter that got relisted at 592? This one right here has a bid on it at 610. So you know, it's just you just all about having your cards listed up on the market. That 592 got bought, the 600 went through for a past hour and didn't expire. Somebody wants a center mid Pirlo and they're bidding on this card for 610K with the chem style on it. So that's another thing to keep in mind as well. Just keeping your cards up on the market gives them a better chance to sell because they're there, especially on PS4, there's a lot of demand. Uh, and if your cards aren't on the market, obviously they can't sell. So that's a lot of information, okay? This is like 25 minutes long already. It's longer than I wanted it to be, but the meat of it is look for the undercuts, use footbin, but also more than that, use your transfer targets and use your mind. Watch and see what prices 
that cards sell at because that is the most important thing. Make sure that you're focusing on meta OP cards and that you're taking into account the timing of the market as well. Sunday nights uh, during the weekend league sell-off could be a great time to buy some of these cards on undercuts, but you probably wouldn't be looking to sell them right away. You might be looking to sell them in the next day or two as their price kind of recovers if there's some panic selling. And don't be afraid to scoop into the market if you see a card's price getting very low. Like let's say this Trezeguet, or let's go back to our Vieira example. Let's say you see three Vieiras on the market. You have five million coins, uh, and you see three Vieiras on the market for 1.2 flat, or like 1.21, 1.22, 1.23. You can go ahead and scoop all those up and kind of reset that market price because you know that Vieira sells for 135. Kind of list those up. Maybe list one at like one four, list one at one three five, and then list one at like one three seven, and have an opportunity to make one of those cards uh, sell in the next few hours or in the next day, um, just by knowing the trends of that card. So trends are so important. Knowing prices are so important, and then obviously knowing what's going on uh, in terms of the regular market trends as well is so important. So I think. I covered just about everything in terms of these cards. I wanted to look at why they're popular to trade with. I wanted to look at how to find them on the market, what cards to, to trade with, what cards to start with if you're new to icon trading. And um, yeah, so if you guys enjoyed this video, it's very long, the very long how-to videos. I appreciate you guys supporting these videos. But if, you, if this helped you at all, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. I like to help you out here with icons. And of course, you can always tweet me questions about listing icons because these are hard. These are hard to trade with, but they're the most fun to trade with in my opinion as well. So my Twitter link is down in the description if you'd like to tweet me as well. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Thank you guys for 4K subscribers. I greatly appreciate it. Um, it makes me so happy that you guys are enjoying these videos uh, and subscribing for more of them. Uh, and until the next video, I'm gonna peace out, boys, all right? It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.